What's going on guys? Zeus here. And in today's video, I'm going to ask a question that I don't think a lot of feminists or egalitarians really ask themselves. And the question, well, is the title of this video. Can men and women really be equal? And if you want my honest answer to that question, the answer is this. No, no, not, not really. At least, not in the way that a lot of feminists or egalitarians want. While we all know that it's actually just female supremacy they're after, feminists like to claim that what they want is for men and women to be equal, right? For them to be able to do the same thing and expect the same result. And this is really what egalitarians want too, except in its true sense. Except, I don't really think men and women can be equal in that sense. Because when you really think about it, men and women, we already are pretty equal. Or actually, technically, no, we're not. But I'll get into that in just a second. You see, the way men and women are equal, in a sense, is that our powers, our inherent biological abilities, balance each other out on both a social level and on a political and economical level. Well, really more like the political economic level, still kind of panders more towards women. But like I said, we'll get into that in just a second. So, like I said, egalitarians, they're... They're fine, okay, because they're men and women. They just want to be equal. Not really. I don't really focus on egalitarians too much. I really focus more on how femi feminism, right? So really, when I, whenever, when I first thought about feminism, I really thought, or at least this third wave brand of feminism, I was really thinking, I don't think that these women really want to be equal to men. I really don't think that's what they were after. Now, this is my uh, the first time I heard of feminism, right? Uh, this was when I was like back in uh, maybe high school when I heard of this third brand of feminism, this radical feminism, which is ridiculously stupid that I make countless videos on. That's when I heard of that type of feminism. But I didn't give it too much of a thought because I thought it was ridiculous until recently with the whole Elliot Roger thing. Right. <laughs> so, like I said, I thought I don't really think these women know what they want. I guess which really isn't surprising because most girls don't really know what they want, but that's for another video. So, as I was thinking, I thought to myself, and I was like, you know what, I found out the perfect parallel, the perfect analogy for feminism. And the perfect analogy for feminism would probably be the ending of the movie Aladdin. Now, I'm probably getting three reactions right about now. The first one's probably like, what? The second one's probably like, you know what? I can see it. And the third one's probably like, dude, I've never seen Aladdin. Well, you're in luck, because I'm going to play the ending of Aladdin, and hopefully you guys can figure out how it represents feminism. Without the genie boy, you're nothing. The genie. The genie. The genie has more power than you'll ever have. What? He gave you your power. He could take it away. Al, what are you doing? Why are you bringing me into this? Face it, Jafar. You're still just second best. You're right. His power does exceed my own. Not enough for long. <laughs> the boy is crazy. He's a little punch drunk. One too many hits with a snake. Slave! I make my third wish. I wish to be an all-powerful genie! All right, your wish is my command. Way to go, Al. The power. <laughs> the absolute power! What have you done? Trust me! The universe is mine to command! To control! Not so fast, Jafar! Aren't you forgetting something? You wanted to be a genie? You got it! What? Everything that goes with it! No! No! I'm getting out of here! I Phenomenal cosmic powers! Come on, you're the genie! I love freedom! Itty bitty living space.
If you pay attention to a lot of feminist rhetoric, you'll notice that everything, and I mean everything they say, usually panders towards special treatment for women. You'll notice that whenever a men's rights issue is ever brought up, they don't care. They don't even have an argument to back it up. Actually, their argument is either, I mean, their argument is pretty much just to say, well, whenever female issues are brought up, you say, what about the men? Which I guess technically really isn't much of an even argument. But I mean, that's, that's the reply you'll usually get because feminists don't really care about men's issues or men's problems, right? So, uh, to explain, you guys are probably still a little confused. Well, <clears throat> uh, the explanation is pretty simple, see, okay? And honestly, the ending to Aladdin is probably one of my favorite Disney endings like, of all time. Because what happened in Aladdin was Jafar's... Jafar's tragic flaw, his power hungry, power hungriness, his power hungriness, I would just say, was what led to his defeat. Because Jafar wanted to obtain more power. Jafar already had power. He was a sorcerer. A sorcerer, I'm sorry. He already had power. He already had Aladdin B. He already had the genie under his thumb. But he wanted more. He wanted to be just like the genie that was he already in his control. This is feminism in a nutshell. Feminists, or women in general, already have power over men. But, because they're stuck in this victim complex, they want more power. They want to be able to do more things just like men can do. Except, they neglect this aspect right here. With great power, there must also come great responsibility. Because when it always comes down to it, it is always the man, even with all of his responsibilities and all of his power, is still taking care of the woman. Or at least in a biblical sense, a biblical monogamous sense, that's how it's supposed to be. The man is supposed to raise the children and protect them and provide for them. The mother is supposed to support the man and be nurturing to the children. That's how it's supposed to work in a biblical sense. Right? But families don't want it like that. Feminists want to be equal to men, but they don't want to have all the responsibilities to it. Because men have to sign up for selective services. Women don't ever have to deal with that. A lot of women don't have the physical strength to do construction working, or I don't see a lot of uh, female garbage truck drivers or garbage truck collectors. Now, there could be, I just don't see any. So, you don't see feminists talking about how they want all those jobs to be balanced or equal. They just want the corporations, this whole band bossy thing that was big for a couple of weeks. That was damn stupid. <laughs> but um, that's the thing. They only want these big corporation jobs. They don't ever want to truly be equal, like work in sanitation or like work in electrical engineering. Right? So, like I said, Uncle Ben, greatest, one of the greatest quotes ever. With great power comes great responsibility. Because with all of the things we men kind of have, the privileges men have, and I don't really even know what kind of privileges I have because I'm a black guy. I think the only privilege I have as being a black guy is I get to use the word nigga without people complaining, but whatever. Uh, even with all those privileges, we still have the responsibility to carry the world on our shoulders. Women don't have that. Women truly only have one responsibility, and that is to keep the human race going. Now, that's a huge responsibility. In fact, that makes you the most important sex out of the two of us. Because if all men were to drop dead right now, like if I were to just die, the world could keep going. Women have sperm banks. If all women were to die, though, that's it. We got 120 years, really. There ain't much we men can do. We don't have artificial wounds. Even if we did have artificial wounds, we won't have any way to collect egg cells. I mean, to my knowledge, I don't know about any egg banks. There could be some, I just... Not to my knowledge. But we don't have any egg banks, so... That's it. That's the end. There's nothing we can do about it. It's over. So, once again, women have a great deal of power that they don't even understand that they have. Especially sexual power over men. So here's one thing that I'm going to explain. So, men have more physical power over women. We're usually taller, we're stronger, and we're faster than them. Um, we are more logical thinkers than most women. Now, of course, this isn't to say women cannot think logically, it's just that most women don't. Well, sorry. Most women are emotional thinkers, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
it's not a bad thing at all, actually. It's a, it's a great thing, just not within context. And by context, I mean emotional thinking is not going to help you out in a debate, but it will help you out when consoling a friend. So in its context, it's great. Uh, same thing with being able to think logically. But this is where men are able to come up with better business plans and they're more drawn towards working in mathematics and whatnot. And so men dominate in those fields because biologically that's how our brains are constructed. Now, so while men usually stand at the top of like the corporate ladders and at the top of a uh, political uh, leadership, women completely dominate the social sphere, and I mean completely. There is no questions about it. Women control what is and is not acceptable in the social sphere. Apparent, and 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 this is evident in the whole um, slut shaming thing. This is evident in the whole teach men not to rape kind of thing. These women are are campaigning to say that being it's it's they're to, they're policing um, words. Ban boss is a good example of policing words, uh, policing slut shaming. You can't make fun of a woman for dressing a certain way. And I think this is a great example of what I mean by controlling the social sphere because slowly and gradually they're getting men to stop and say, you know what, you're right. We shouldn't be able to use the word slut. Now I say, now I say bullshit. <laughs> If you're a slut, you're a slut, and I don't care. That's just me. I call a spade a spade. But, but that's a good example of women controlling the social sphere. Like, you can't even get upset with a woman in public without someone saying something. You can't do nothing to a woman in public. Women control the social sphere in its entirety, and there's not much any man can really do about it. And this is really where our powers kind of balance out. Because, and here's the thing, even when it comes to legislation, a lot of legislation, especially when it comes to the court systems, still pander towards women. I think um, Sargon of Akkad had a video where a woman straight up tried to slit this man's throat and got off scot-free. I said, go check out that video for more information. And no man, no, especially no, no black man can even raise his hand to a white, prof white officer without going to jail. That's it. Like, that's game, set, and match. <laughs> let alone take a knife and attempt to murder him, this white woman got off scot-free. So even the legal system still panders more towards women. So really, women still have a little more power than men do, especially over the sexual realm, too. So women control the sexual power. They, um, the court system panders towards um, women a lot more, too. And women completely control the social sphere. So women already have a lot of things that they can do. And there's not really a great deal of things that men do. Men, we get the leadership, but women, they get more of the social, political control. And that's really how our powers kind of balance out. But I feel like feminists want to upset that, and they want more political control, too. So, yeah. But um, I think this is pretty much the end of this video. I think I said everything I wanted to say. And so... I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope you guys have a good discussion, and really talk about this. Hopefully we can get some feminists and some egalitarians over here, and really talk about, can men and women really be equal in the sense that we can do the same things and expect the same result? Because I say, no, we're fundamentally different. Um, that's why double standards exist. So, have a discussion, talk about it, guys. And um, as always, thanks for stopping by and checking out my channel. If you like this video, please click that like button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comments below. And as always, have a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon.